Hello, everybody. A warm welcome to the Haters TV football podcast in the company of Jerry Cox from Haters TV, writer and broadcaster, and Patrick Barkley, who, if you've not heard of by now, then you <laughs> would, should not be tuning into this podcast, quite frankly, a, a veteran of Fleet Street. So the race for the top four is clearly hotting up if the title race is all but over, but the race for the top four is intriguingly poised, Patrick. I mean... Mm-hmm. What's your reading into it? Because it looks like Chelsea maybe are the vulnerable ones with the likes of United, Tottenham, yes. even Sheffield in the mix. I think Manchester United, even though you know they were well beaten at, at Liverpool, there, there, was, there was fight there. Hmm. There was um, there was enough to suggest that they can pick up points uh, enough. I, I I really think they can. I mean, obviously Leicester, from the neutral point of view, I really want Leicester to be back in. Not not just because. You know, everybody developed a love for Leicester um, when they won the title, but also because I think for sheer quality um, and balance in a team, I think they could have another good season in Europe. Yeah. So I really want them representing mm. the Premier League next season um, at the highest level because I think they're that good. Um, and I think the manager's that good. You do? Yes, I do. Okay. I do. And now it's, I, it's, it's, it's funny because he clearly divides three, opinion. Three games yeah. and, and he's started dividing yeah. opinion. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a hard, especially as they were against easy teams uh, like Liverpool, uh, Man, Man City. City. I know. Um, but, <laughs> um, but, well, Southampton, the third best team in the country <laughs> at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, it, it, it's. I, I personally, I, I'm just hoping Leicester do it. I think it will be really, really sad if they don't because of the quality. And also, I want to see Vardy at the top level in Europe because I'm. Uh, well, I think anybody who follows football is a Vardy fan. Yeah, you know? it is a terrific story. He just gives You're you right. value for money yeah. and and quality in every sense. Jerry, um, if you don't, do you think we are where we are with the top four, or do you see a, a late comer uh, come through? Do you I, I see think, a story in Sheffield United, perhaps? Well. Sheffield United are a story already, aren't yeah, they? I mean, yeah. that's, a, that's yeah. true. remarkable the way they've done it. And they're, and they're doing it playing good football as well, you know. I think there were a few sort of um, cheap comments before the season started that they would just be a long ball team. That was know? lazy, wasn't I think, it? I think you're thinking back to the sort of early 90s. I think and, anyone you know, who Harry saw them Bassett's playing in the championship yeah, 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 yeah. would not have said that. And Wolves, we know, are a good footballing side and yeah. they've got some spending power as well. So And, and a good manager as well. So, he sounds quite frustrated, actually. Nuno. Nuno. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, money, yeah. Money's not been readily yeah. spent. They played 38 games and mm. boy, what, that, they needed that win against Southampton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's those two as the surprise packages. And then you've got Arsenal, United and Spurs who are all sort of chasing Chelsea. Mm. And it's a bit like last season, you know, Tottenham stumbled over the line into mm. fourth place in the end, you know, because Arsenal kept dropping points. And, and I think this is happening again. You know, Chelsea have dropped points when you don't expect it. Newcastle away, for example. You know, Bournemouth at home, Southampton at home. Games they really ought to be winning, you think. Mm. And so, you know, they're not invulnerable. They mm. Eight points ahead at mm. the moment, I think, or, or maybe six, is it, from, from Wolves? Yeah. Um, they could be caught, but then mm. you'd need the teams below them to put on a, 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 a run of wins. And yeah. Spurs don't look capable of a run of wins. No. Chelsea, they're, they're, Chelsea they're are strangely Chelsea. inconsistent. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I find that disappointing because uh, I mean, despite what Roy Keane said about Frank Lampard getting an easy run yeah. because he's English, well, I'm never going to give people an easy run for that reason. <laughs> you two are the only, probably the only two English people I like. <laughs> But Frank, apart from Frank Lampard, yeah. and the, uh, Chelsea have just played such wonderful yeah. football uh, this season um, that I do hope they get over the line mm-hmm. because uh, you know for the same similar reasons to Leicester, I just think they're really great to watch yeah. and 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 balanced and and they're a they're a proper Chelsea team they at the moment. Me at the of, moment, they're yeah. a proper Chelsea. I team. I said yeah, this yeah. very early in the season. I thought they'd get the top three. Mm. Um, they remind me of, of Pochettino's first big season at Spurs. You know, young players, really hungry. He's got them in there and they've shaken up the established players mm. and they've added a little bit of, brought the fans back on side. That's mm. what, what Kane and, and Ryan Mason did at Spurs. Mm. And you can see that with Mason Mount and, and uh, Tammy Abraham. Yeah. They're bringing the fans back on board, you know. Yes, and it was quite, you can it was getting that. toxic, wasn't it? It was, Conte yeah. and then Sarri, yeah. they yeah. were losing it. Um, but now, you know, maybe they're having that little bit of a wobble. Mm. You know, Tammy's great. He's a great um, finisher and he's instinctive. And he's a leader. But he's not line finished. Leader. He's not, he's, he's not the, the finished article. And yeah. he will miss chances. Yes. And as long as the crowd don't turn on him, you know. So there's a I'm not comparing of, him with Didier Drogba. But if you looked at Didier Drogba at the same age, 
he wasn't he didn't take every chance. No. Strikers often and get better figures when yeah. they're 28 than they do yeah. when they're 20. And Drogba took a season to settle in at Chelsea, didn't he? He did. His yeah. first season was season But is there this danger? He was considered a diver. Yeah. But is there this danger, the fact that, yes, the youngsters have come through under Frank Lampard mainly because they had no choice because yes, yes, the, yes. the transfer ban and he has reconnected the club back with the fans. Mm -hmm. But could the youth ultimately cost him because that rawness up front means that goals aren't readily available and Tammy Abraham after a stunning start, isn't mm -hmm. getting it all his own way yeah, now, yeah. is he? And yeah. therefore, they might need some experience to pull them through. Yeah, and I think well, one, one thing that's forgotten is they lost one of the best game changers in the business. Hazard, Hazard was get them yeah. a goal out of nothing at yes. any stage in the last five years. You know, that's true. He's gone, and, you, and that's a huge gap. And Pulisic came in, or Pulisic, as yeah. the Americans call him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and started to show signs of that, and now he's got injured, is not he? So, yeah. Um, Obviously, a lot ha depends on what happens in the transfer window. But Chelsea don't seem to have that game-changing attacking player no. who can produce magic out of nowhere. Mm. And, you know, we said uh, in another show about Gareth Bale at Spurs. You know, he's, he's the sort of player that when he was playing, they could just turn it off. He mm. could turn a game, you know. Yes. And that's what a Tottenham need, maybe a United need, a, maybe a Chelsea. It, it, but he'd be a short-term option. Yeah, but sometimes maybe. a short-term option's a good option. Yeah. Be, well, Manchester United and the prize, like don't forget, you know, for these clubs, oh, huge. if Arsenal, United or Tottenham miss out on the Champions League, you know, Arsenal United have already for a couple of years, Tottenham would be the first in four or five years. It's a huge amount of money. I mean, mm. Spurs earned over 100 million out of the Champions League last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. You know, they got a stadium Mind to you, they pay got to the final, which makes yeah, yeah, an yeah. exceptional but, run. But, but even so, not to be involved next year yeah. is a costly. They could afford one year out, but if it becomes two or three yes. you know, and they fall behind, yes. you know, it's difficult. And yeah. Arsenal, um, you know, their primary aim at the start of the season under Unai Emery, let's not forget, yeah, was yeah. to finish in the top four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For Mikel Arteta, one win in five for him at the minute. Disappointing draw at the weekend against mm, Sheffield United. Yeah. They're still in the mix for you? Just not? about. Just mm. about. I think they probably need three more wins than their rivals, mm. the teams. And I don't. I think the season's too. Yeah. yeah. We've only too got advanced. what about 15 games, six yeah. left. I, I think that's a big ask for Arsenal in the place that they are at the moment. Yeah. So I, I do see them missing out again, yeah. It's, it's a rebuild draws. there, isn't it? It's a slow rebuild. I think the fans and the, the thing like is, Arteta. Are we certain that the ownership <coughs> of the club mm. well, give a damn yeah, about yeah, that yeah. as long as the as long as long the sums add up? What do you think? I think, uh, well, Arsenal's problems are what they were under, uh, same as they were under Wenger and, and Emery. Yeah, the spine, yeah. you know, central midfield and defence. They, they need to strengthen that. And that's going to be the summer at the earliest, really. Mm. Yeah, OK. Um, any surprise names to check um, in the mix or not? Well, I mean, I think Wolves and Sheffield United are the two yeah. that could nick I'd, that fourth spot. I'd, One I'm, of those I'll two I'll tell you could. what I think is very impressive about Wolves. Um, coping with, uh, usually teams qualify for the uh, Europa League mm. and their league position yeah plummet they plummet which is like Burnley did Wolves haven't done Burnley perfect yeah. example yeah. Um, many years ago Newcastle you know with Bargy yes. and and uh, even Fulham with with yeah. Roy when they were getting to the Europa League final yeah they dropped three or four places in the league mm. so it is it is difficult and it's greatly to uh, Nuno's uh, credit and, and, and the squad he's got, even though he might be moaning about it, mm. that so far they've managed to keep up the level yeah. of performance. They've got, can, also, when you consider that VAR-related <laughs> law changes have Hasn't cost helped them, has yeah. Yeah, I mean, more than anyone. Pro they'd yeah. probably be wow. in contention for the title if it hadn't been for all these <laughs> law changes. <laughs> Do you know what? I was hoping to get to a podcast <laughs> oh. without mentioning VAR, oh, no. but there you go. He's throwing sorry. a spanner in sorry. the world. Sorry about anyway. that. Yeah. Listen, we're going to have to leave it there. Paddy, thanks. As Thank well. you. Absolute gentleman. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks, buddy. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, that's the uh, podcast from Haters TV, available on all social media channels, including uh, Instagram and YouTube. From the three of us, see you next time.